Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. I um, want to thank everybody for being on the call today live and also want to welcome all of those of you who are listening on the podcast. I'm excited to uh, see what we get to learn today. We're um, Today's December 30th, tomorrow's New Year's Eve, and then we've got New Year's Day and We'll be jumping right into January and uh, on our rounds of gratitude that we did before we started the recording, we had several different takes on what that means, Um, but definitely there's a transition that's happening between December and January, the end of the year, the new year, going to be a really awesome transition. I myself am closing the book on several things. I made a list over the weekend of the things that I'm closing the book on. There's uh, a few things that I'm going to be really focusing uh, consistently on for the next couple of days to make sure that those things get closed out. And then um, opening the book to some brand new things, some things that I don't even know are coming yet. Um, I'm really grateful that there is like a peace Uh, that I'm feeling within this um, transition period. And that's what I'd like to focus on today um, for our gratitude, is gratitude for peaceful transition. Um, I'm going to set the timer for 90 seconds, and we're just going to focus silently for 90 seconds. Write down whatever comes to you in your own personal inspiration, and then after the 90 seconds, we'll share what we get and see what happens today. So 90 seconds, gratitude for peaceful transition, focusing silently and just writing down whatever comes to you. Begin. Um, a couple of things came to me. First of all, just a lot of gratitude for new beginnings. Every year, um, the seasons, fall and winter, are just a really great time to be still. Um, I'm happy to let go of the busyness of summer, spring, and fall, um, where you know I'm, we're busy working on our garden, and in the fall we're canning things and. In the spring, we're planting and cultivating the ground and everything. So there's there's a lot of stuff that's happening in those months. And then in the fall and winter, in the winter months, December, January, February, it's kind of nice just to let go of that. Just let the snow cover up the ground and uh, even covers up the mess <laughs> of maybe you know the dry, dead. Uh, plants that didn't get pulled up or whatever, Um, some branches that are still laying out there from our spring cuttings that didn't get burned. And um, uh, it just is like this quiet, peaceful 
time right now. So I'm uh, really happy for that. My daughter and I started, um, this is our fourth year doing this, uh, what we call Hibernation Month. And January we schedule um, usually about two activities a week that are meant to be indoors. We'll, we'll usually do a read-a-thon and um, we do a new recipe night You know, where we both uh, make something new and just come together and uh, try some new recipes or you know, there's, we do a, a sewing day or a project night or paint night or you know, art night or whatever. So we just do lots of things that are meant to be done inside, quiet, peaceful, and that's, that's what I'm just super excited for for January is just a time to let things gestate, to allow... Um, hi, um, December was kind of a hibernation month for me too because I didn't uh, really do a lot with my business. I've got a lot of new ideas for my business. Um, but January, I think, is a time for just the closing out of the last year and just getting ready for the new year. So just excited for that peaceful transition happening right now in lots of different ways, personal and business. Who else has something they'd like to share? I'll share. So I was just thinking about how um, peaceful transition is accomplished through letting go of control and allowing God to take control. Mm. Thank you. Wow, awesome. Thank you. Who else? I'd like to share. Um, Daniel? To me, it's kind of strange, the idea of a peaceful transition. I always mm. associate, excuse me, I can't pronounce the word, associate transitions with anxiety and, uh, and you know, like tightness and mm-hmm. maybe a little bit of fear. Um, mm. But, you know, so for me it's like astonishing, you know, it's, it's just like, okay, yeah, you know, it's possible to have a smooth transition, but a peaceful one is like something new to me. Thank you. Mm, thank you. I appreciate that. I know a lot of people have that feeling as well that change is stressful, <laughs> and you know there is a lot of fear and anxiety around it. Um, I have had enough experiences in my life that I I've, I've chosen to have change be really peaceful and easy. And so I appreciate you kind of bringing me back to that place where a lot of people don't feel that yet. Thank you. And also for embracing the idea that it's possible for it to be smooth and easy, peaceful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. I am grateful for the peaceful transition, for peaceful transition, because before it was just chaos or distress, and um, I couldn't choose and... The transition of letting go, knowing what's next and eliminating what's not, <clears throat> what's not, letting go of what's not. So those things that are trying to sneak in and distract and cause unrest um, don't get in um, because the peaceful transition is clear. Um, and that's why it's peaceful, I think, because it's clear. This is what, what's next. And the transition into that is peaceful when it when it's right, <clears throat> so I love that letting God take take the lead and trusting Him and trusting myself. Awesome, thank you. I uh, also feel uh, from what you're saying that a lot of confidence in yourself, your uh, your vision, is what kind of allows that that piece to come into it. Uh, a lot of the fear and anxiety, I think, comes when we don't know what to expect when we make a change. But um, when we can, uh, like using our daily GPS and connecting with our vision board and just asking what's next, and then when we get to the point where we can really trust our own intuition, trust ourselves, trust the source that we're receiving that intuition from, and, and also trust the vision that's being created. It's like, yeah, it might feel a little bit uncomfortable because we're stepping into something new, but look at what we're creating. And so it kind of takes us beyond that fear and anxiety to the excitement and anticipation of, of what's coming. 
I feel like that's a, a really key piece to a peaceful transition is being able to see the end result in our minds and see that it's somewhere that we really want to go. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Any other thoughts before we move on to our permission process? So this is Suzanne. My thought is um, tools for transition. I'm grateful that I have learned um, tools to make that transition more peaceful. I, uh, you know, in the past, I and other people have don't have these tools of visualization, verbalization, writing, receiving inspiration, taking action. It's kind of like you were going through the daily GPS as a tool. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yep, yeah, absolutely right. It does. Before I had some of these tools, I was like Daniel was saying, in fear all the time and making decisions based on fear. It's like, what if I don't do this? Well, I better do something because, you know, this is not, you know, I, I'm afraid that I'll miss out or I'm afraid that I'll um, die. <laughs> I'm afraid I won't survive if I don't do something. That was the, how I would always make my choices, and so they were all, all motivated by fear. And now, you know, with these tools of being able to, um, you know, see what, where it is that we're going and trusting the tools, trusting um, the process, um, trusting ourselves, trusting God, all of that um, allows me to now not make decisions based on fear of like running away from something, but actually running towards something and excitement and love and, oh, I'm so excited, you know, and I'm, I'm loving what it, where I'm going. Totally different feeling. Thank you. All right. Um, any other thoughts? All right, let's go ahead and shift over to our permission process. I feel like um, this is a really fun place to be able to transition um, into permission process because um, we've kind of created this space of, oh, it's actually possible to have a peaceful transition into something new, into some change. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath. And first of all, um, First of all, check your mute button. Make sure that you're muted so we can have a private, silent meditation. And um, invite us to um, be open to envision. Um, Maybe it's something that you are wanting to accomplish this year, 2020. Maybe it's a just an idea right now. Maybe it's not even a full vision, but just an idea of something that would be awesome. Um, maybe it's something you're closing the door on and you don't really know what the, you're going to be opening the door to, but you know you're closing the door on something. And it could be closing the door on a project or it could be closing the door on a way of being, maybe mediocrity or maybe financial stress or maybe um, closing the door on an old relationship that isn't working for you anymore. There's lots of different things that could be closing the door on for this last year and then also opening the door to something new. So just allow your imagination to carry you forward into 2020 through all the different seasons of the year where sort of just ideas gestating right now and then starting to cultivate those ideas, planting the seeds of those ideas, and then starting to see the seeds sprout, just small growth, and then also coming into full flower, and then finally picking the fruit in the fall and enjoying the sweetness and the succulence of new fruits that have been created from just the idea that was planted today and then feeling gratitude of abundance of receiving towards the end of this of this new year 2020 coming up and just allow yourself to go to that end result of um, receiving 
enjoying, feeling gratitude, experiencing, um, just feeling the satisfaction of accomplishment, completion. And what does that picture look like? Just get some clarity right now of the vision of what you are creating in 2020. And know that all things are possible at this moment. Right now, it's just a seed of an idea that's even just germinating underneath the surface, beneath the snow. It hasn't even started to crack open yet. But it's the seed of an idea. And everything is possible. And so go forward to the end of, this, of 2020 and see the end result and feel that joy and happiness and fulfillment, sense of accomplishment. And go ahead and write down or draw out anything that is coming to you of what that end result looks like, what that picture looks like. And within this picture, I invite you to look back over the year and uh, towards January, and what was the number one most important thing that actually set the wheels in motion of this creation being a reality? What was the one most important thing that you did on December 30th, 2019, that actually started this in process, that it set it on the path that uh, was it's like there was no way of stopping it. It was just a matter of time that this actually was, was going to become a reality. What was the one thing that was needed? What was the inspired shortcut that you took advantage of on December 30th that really ensured that this end result was successful? What's your inspired shortcut today? And as you're getting cleared with that inspired shortcut and you're looking over the year and just feeling the gratitude of it being accomplished, what is the limiting belief that's coming up for you about the accomplishment of this or about taking action on this one simple step today? What is, what's the limiting belief? And as you're getting clear with that limiting belief, um, take a moment also and just carry that limiting belief forward. If you, use that, if you hold on to that limiting belief today and use that as your catalyst to create from, what is the outcome? Is it different than the outcome that you just envisioned? And become really clear with what this limiting belief is in this moment. If you hold on to this limiting belief, how that's going to affect the desired outcome at the end of 2020. And if you don't like that limiting belief and you'd like to choose to have a different outcome than what that limiting belief will create for you, you definitely have that choice. You can give yourself permission to choose some new beliefs that will support you finishing the outcome that you want. And so if you're ready to give yourself permission to choose those new beliefs that will create the outcome that you want, say yes. 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 All right. And then what are those new beliefs? Let's choose two or three new beliefs that will empower you to be able to finish, to be able to take action on that inspired shortcut today that will set the wheels in motion, that will ensure the uh, successful outcome of your vision. And also, what new beliefs align with that successful outcome? Because you becoming someone who is aligned with that successful outcome, that's one thing that is required today for you to, um, to, be, to ensure the, out, the successful outcome. You have to be aligned with it. You have to be the kind of person that can receive that can receive it and keep it. So what are your new beliefs? And I invite you to choose at least one or two 
that say I am at the beginning and that help you align with that successful outcome. And um, I invite you to look over that list and check in one last time and make sure that they are in alignment with that vision that you have at the end of 2020, what you are desiring to experience. Take one more deep breath, breathe these new beliefs in, and become these new beliefs right now because you becoming ready for, prepared for, aligned with, in integrity with this vision is the only thing that you have to hold on to right now. This is faith that you are the person that can receive this successful outcome at the end of the year. And in a moment, I'm going to open it up for some shares. And um, I also want to invite anybody who is wanting to have just that extra little boost um, before you jump into January. If you would like to have a conversation with me, a 15-minute call with me, you can do that for free. And all you have to do is just go to askwileen.com and that will take you directly to my calendar and you can schedule a 15-minute call with me, askwileen.com. And um, it's a free call. It's just something that I offer for all of those who are listening to the Gratitude Call, whether you're here live or if you're here um, on the podcast. would love to invite you to connect with me at askwileen.com. All right. Who um, would like to share something about what they experienced today? The experience for me was... Um, <clears throat> My limiting belief was others will doubt I'm going or doing the right thing. But the cost mm-hmm. of that, letting others, what others think, influence me, I mean, that's the cost. You know, I'll let others influence me. And, and that takes me off track to where I need to be. So I am grateful. I am clear and aligned with my purpose. I am successful. I am confident. I am at peace. And I am enthusiastically engaged in my life. Beautiful. Thank you. You know, and each one of us has our own vision, right? Nobody has your vision. And so if you expect other people to be in alignment with your vision, you're always going to get disappointed because um, nobody else can see what you can see. Right now it doesn't exist in the physical world, so they can't see it. So it would be really silly for us to, to think that they can the, the best thing that we can do to help people be on our side is to create, to actually have it become a physical thing at the end of 2020. And then they can look at it and say, yeah, I knew you could do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Well, what's well. interesting is when you do claim and you're, you are confident with what you're doing, others are excited for you. That's true. They can see it. They can start seeing it too. You're right. I'm glad that you added that part. Yeah, they can't see it in the physical world, but they can definitely start seeing it in their own mind when you're committed, when you're 100% confident in you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Love that. Interesting. So when we doubt, you know, when we're worried about what people think, we're not confident. But if we can let that go and we can just stand out and speak confidently, then they can see it. And so then they trust us and they believe in it. That's cool. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. So we get to create what we want. Anybody else like to share? Mine is kind of similar. Um, Mine has to be to do with my choices and what if I choose incorrectly because I have negative past experiences or beliefs or emotions stored that are causing me to make the wrong choices. So my new beliefs are I release the negative emotions that are holding me back 
I make the right choices for me, and I am sure and confident with myself and the choices I make. Awesome. I'm going to just suggest a slight upgrade on the first one about releasing the negative emotions. Um, As you start getting more, as you start mastering the permission process, you know, of identifying your limiting beliefs and, and examining the cost and letting go of those old limiting beliefs and choosing into new, you start embracing those negative emotions. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that I've got this anxiety because I know that there's a limiting belief in there that I get to let go of. So mm-hmm. it's almost like they become our friends. So instead of uh, letting go, maybe even choosing to use and instead of the word negative, I always use the words low vibration. So I'm just okay. like stating a fact. The, um, the emotions that I feel, they're on that lower vibration scale. I get to use those to my advantage because I can identify the limiting belief that would stop me, um, that's an obstacle. So maybe I use the low vibration emotions to my advantage or something like that. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any last thoughts before we close our call today? All right, well, thank you for everyone that has shared. This, um, I just feel super light and happy, excited to move forward. Um, I hope uh, all of you, as you're stepping into, um, as you're closing the book on some things, closing the chapter on some things, and stepping into something new, a new chapter for 2020, I hope this call today has helped to create some lightness and, and joy and also clarified some vision of what you want to accomplish this year. It would be really fun to see what those are. Um, go to the Facebook group, Breakthrough with Gratitude, and post those if you feel like you'd like to um, and, and help us, uh, you know, have us be your sort of your accountability partners, your, your running partners in 2020. And uh, we'd love to, to be on that journey with you and share, uh, share what your journey is and, and we all share together. So thank you all for being on the call today. We look forward to tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Time, and uh, excited for um, what we're going to be creating over these next few days. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.